Hey everybody, it's Romania Black, and we're on episode 13 of Sarune. I would say it's a season finale, which it is, but we still have the OVA after this, so there's still some ways to go uh, with our Sarune journey, but I am going to turn that up, but I am really excited. I've honestly waited like a whole week and a half <laughs> since watching episode 12 uh, because I was like, okay, you, you watched ahead, now let everything catch up. So uh, episode 10 is out on Patreon right now and episode 9 is out on YouTube, but I couldn't wait. I honestly want to catch up because I want to start uh, watching the new season uh, about the time that it comes out. And so I wanted to go ahead and watch the season finale and then I actually uh, managed to get the Blu-ray on uh, Black Friday here in the US. So it was on sale, so I got it really cheap. And so I haven't looked at it. It's got all these extra goodies in it and I've not looked at it yet because I was like, I wanna finish the season and the OVA before I look at them. So um, next week when we do the OVA review, I will get that Blu-ray set out and go through the booklet and there's like extra things that are included to it. And I'll kind of go over that with you all and show you all what it is in case if you're curious. So, and it looks like there's like bio information and stuff, which I've not read because I didn't wanna be spoiled by anything that might happen in the season finale. So I'll go over that next week after we do the OVA reaction. So I'm really excited. And plus that means that I'll get to watch uh, season one again, maybe in the dub before watching uh, season two as it comes out week to week. So I'm excited to be watching that week to week with you all. It's gonna be a good time. So but yeah, last episode was so heartwarming. Like, they got to talk to Masasan. He's okay. They're going into the finals. Seo did her best. I felt for Seo so hard, but I'm glad that Minato had that rallying talk with Kaido and, and calling him Kaido, and, and they were okay with it. And we're just going into the season finale right now, which is, I don't think our boys are going to beat Kurosaki. I mean... I don't think they're going to beat him, but I think it may come down. It would be amazing if it came down to like Seiya and Shu and Minato. And if it came down to like Shu and Minato, that would be amazing. But, or if it came down to Seiya and Shu, that would be amazing. But I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. How the, the relay angle of that will work. I don't think that. I don't think that our boys are going to win, but I think it'd be cool if it came down to like them versus Kurosaki. And if Kurosaki won, it'd be like, okay, now you guys have something to aim for. <laughs> but I don't really have any comments. Um, none too much. I just, I've loved this series. It's been such a comfort anime and just has been so wonderful to watch. And it has me really excited for season two. I feel the same energy like I did with Free. Like Free season one is really good. I like Free Season 1. Like from episode 7 of Season 1 of Free On, it was like just amazing. But then Season 2 of Free came along and I was like, oh! And it got even better. And so I'm hoping that's what's going to happen with Sarune, is that I'll like Season 1, but then Season 2 will come along and it'll be even better. So I've needed something to replace the free void in my heart. And I feel like Sarune has done that, even though they are very different shows. They still leave you with that same warm, wholesome feeling inside, which is wonderful. So with that being said, I'm excited to talk about this episode y'all and to get down and watch it. I hope y'all are too. So we're not going to waste any more time. We are going to start episode uh, 13 of Sarune and we are going to do that here in three, two, one, and let's do this. Everything happens for a reason, huh? <laughs> oh my gosh. That, that didn't feel long enough. That went by so quickly. So quickly. I was like, are you kidding me? That went by so fast and I was not ready for it to end. I just, oh my gosh. I, mm. And that post credit scene, I, as soon as I got done uh, pausing the reaction, stopping the one video, I went back to episode one and it's been there all along. There's the scene where we assume it's Masaki's grandfather shooting there. It's either him or the one in front of him shooting the arrow and there's a Sarune sound. And if you go back and watch episode one, you see, you see Minato that's like, <gasps> And then you see a you see a kid's like middle school or high school uniform and you see a fist go. And the fist is Masa's where he's like seeing his dad, his grandfather shoot and his fist is like this. And Minato is like, eyes are widened. So yeah, there's basically a love square 
I love square going on and I acknowledge all ships. <laughs> The three-way shipping. Minato's just clueless. He has no clue he's in a in a three-way love war for his affections, right? So we're gonna put I'm gonna put Minato right here. Right, we're gonna put Minato right here. He's at the center of it all. And uh we're gonna just say he is oblivious. <laughs> oblivious just focused on the target. Man, what I didn't think they were gonna win! I didn't. I was like, they're not going to win. It's going to be Kurosaki. And Shu messed up right there at the end. His first missed arrow. And the grandma predicted it. She was like, he's not looking at the target. I was like, she knows what he's looking at. She's like the ultimate Minato Shu shipper. And she's just like, hmm. Like, I just, I I love it. So, so going through here, we have Kazumai versus Asakawa. I'm glad that we just shoot up straight to the finals. Like, we just get through it. And like, our boys, our boys are in such a good spirit. They got in a rhythm. They're good. I, I love that this, and then I love that we have like all their shoes and stuff placed there with the big, the big good luck thing of rainbow cranes. I love that just little imagery right there. It's great. And we have them all there. And then Shu and all them are in the wings waiting. Uh-huh. And Kurosaki versus, versus Onohara. Mm-hmm. And then they managed to get ahead by two hits. Yep. Cosma advances to the finals. I love that Yuna's so excited. I love she gets so happy about it. And here's the thing. Like, the thing about it is, is that when you are on the stage shooting the arrows, you can't, like, show all this crazy emotion. You have to keep it very subdued. Like, even, even, that's kind of the serene thing about this sport is that even when you mess up, even when you know your team's lost, you don't, like, like in other contact sports, like the moment a team loses, they're, like, crying and sobbing and, like, breaking down on the court. But here, it's just, like, you keep composed. And then when you're off, you know, afterwards, then you can let out that emotion. But, man, mm. I did feel for that one twin. I did. And because he was self-aware that something was wrong, right, that he felt off. And I did, but it's like, it's kind of karma. It's like, you guys should have left them alone, right? Whew, every shot counted, right? Man, go back, get out of this OP, everything. So yeah, they're all, they're all riding this high from, from their game and everything. I love it. Also, I want to make note that you had um, the backpacks, like the three girls' backpacks are all by themselves and then the guys are by themselves. Um, I'm going to assume like the part pinkish one's probably in the nows because it has the frog keychain on it. But, um, and Sayo's is probably like the brown geared one. Um, but yeah, like Minato was sitting there and the nows by him, which is great. Ryohei is just like hanging off Sayo like we made it. I love that at the end of it all, Ryohei and Kaido are like the most emotional. <laughs> They're like the most emotion on their sleeves, right? It's great. It's so cute. And then the girls are like, you got to the final. And I love that the two girls are like, we didn't think you'd make it this far. And Sayo's like, leave them alone. <laughs> it's great, but it was Masaki's headbands. And they wanted to give, he's like, should we shoot Rinse on a message? And then I was like, ha, nice one, Minato. And he's like, I wasn't trying to make a joke. That is the, that's the one thing that I like about this episode that I feel is going to lead us into season two. And that's the fact that, okay, we set up, Minato went through and set up the rhythm that the five of them create as a team, right? He set up the rhythm, their roles, how they all influence each other, what their 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 strengths are. And so we spent this last episode setting all of that up. So we know how we know how Kyoto works, we know how the function of the team works. Now I feel like season two is gonna be like, okay, well let's let's now look at each of the characters. We know how Kudo works, we know how the team dynamic works, we've set up that they can do it. Now let's explore the characters in season two. That's kind of what Free did. Free set up the mechanics of the relay and of swimming in season one. And it started to get like the angst and depth of the characters set up as well. But then season two it just like like flourished, right? It bloomed. And so that's what I'm really excited for is I want to see that blooming happen in season two of this show that we get to see with these characters what we do. That's what I'm excited for. I, I'm here for it. I'm ready for it already. And we still have an OVA to go. 
But they're like, oh, and it, it's like the twins don't have any right to get on to them. They're not hyping themselves up. They're just really happy that they did well. Like the twins are kind of jealous that they have this like camaraderie because it's kind of, I feel like the twins are kind of jealous of the Nakama that they all have because really with Kurosaki, you have Sase and the president who are the third years. Then you have some of the second years. And then the only first years are Shu who does not talk at all to anyone hardly, except if your name starts with an M, uh, which Manji should get some talking to. Um, if your name starts with an M and ends in an auto, then he'll talk to you a lot. But the twins don't really have that camaraderie and that team that we've seen so far that that Kazumai has. It's just them and Shu are the only first years and they're kind of at odds against the second and third years. They're respected for their talents, but there's not their, there's, it's not chummy in Kurosaki is what I'm saying. Things aren't chummy with all of them. There's a lot of tension and the twins are just kind of like, talk about small timers. Like, yeah, it's more sad than, it's sad more than anything. Like they're just, they're such meanies, right? And then the president's like, let's go. It's time for semifinals. And so then the the one the two guys that are sitting out, they're like they're asking Fujiwara, they're like the guys from Kazumai that were on our team. Do you think you can beat them? And Fujiwara he says I don't know. He says I don't know. He's like I never think in terms of winning and losing. And the one guy gets kind of rough, like mad at him, but he's like just leave it to Fujiwara. But that's kind of his thing, is that Shu. Shu's been so good because he doesn't think about winning or losing. That doesn't ever affect him. He's like, I just go out, shoot my bow, and do my thing. And man, Kiwani, I'm going to be taking a lot of screen caps. I'm going to tell you all throughout this because they just decided today's the day. We're going to make Shu and Masa and everyone look their best. So that's what we're going to do. And so they go to the semifinals. I was worried that they wouldn't be able to make it, but... They managed to pull it off pretty well against Wakura. I was like going to think that maybe they wouldn't. And I love that as he's thinking about this, he's thinking back to the past. Also want to make note, the little bow that Minato uses is like uh, the same color as Masa's. It's that blue. So I'm like, I'm just throwing it out there. But I like that the grandma, she's like, why is your form weird today? And she's the one that notices that something's wrong with his hand because she was an, a very observant. I've been told that she was a Taurus, a Taurus, which I am a Taurus. And there are many types of Tauruses. There are the quiet Tauruses and there are the, the loud, passionate Tauruses. And usually a character that's a Taurus in a series like Hiragi from Given, Adam from Skate, Luffy from One Piece, they're usually Sawamura from Ace of the Diamond. They're usually like really loud, charismatic characters. Shu is the polar opposite of that. He is very opposite of that, but still has that passion. It's like smoldering. That's very Taurus. So I'm like, okay. And she was like, oh, he hurt the base of his thumb. She was like, I've been staring at it the last 10 minutes. And Minato tries to hide it so he can still practice. And she's like, oh, sweet child, sweet bean. I'm amazed that my grandson noticed it and not me. And he's like, well... And he's, I, I do love that we see Shu, Shu has been very mysterious this series so far. And he's always, even as a kid, they always show his like upper half in the shadows. Like you can't quite see what he's thinking. But Shu, it is nice that we get to see more of his character in the past. And he fell hard. Like he was like, I want Minato to do well too. So I guess do the first ship here where we have Shu. And Shu's whole thing is that he wants Minato to shoot well, right? He, our, our dude Shu fell hard and fast. Like that that thing where Minato's like waiting. Also, I love the, the color combinations where we see Minato wearing a lot of green and Shu wears lots of purples. It's like the grandma already had the Kurosaki like color scheme ready for him. They're like, you will only be dressed in purple, young man. <laughs> And so then he goes back, he sees Minato, and he's like, what? What is it? And Minato's like, oh, nothing. I just wanted to see you before I went home. I, that, yeah, won him over. Won him over. I love that Shu's like, wait, what? He's like, oh. And Minato's like, okay, Shu, bye. See you later. And Shu, that's all it took. 
all it took was him just sticking by to say hi to him. Like he wanted to see him one more time before he went home. It's all it took. And she was like, one over. I love it. And that's all we needed. And then, yeah. And he's just smiling there thinking about it. What's interesting here is with the twins and how the one twin misses and notices something's off and gets kind of concerned about it. And nobody really knows about it at first. Hmm. And, and then we cut over to Saya and Minato and Saya's like, are you curious? And he's like, yes, he has beautiful form. <laughs> I feel like when he said, are you curious? Are you, are you curious about the other side? <laughs> he's like, yes, <laughs> he has beautiful form. We'll put Saya right here. And Minato recognizing, like, like she was just a great, great archer. He has a beautiful drawl, beautiful form, kind of like Masa. Mm -hmm. And say is like, true, but I like yours better. <laughs> say a wasting no energy. Say a, say a liking. Liking Minato's form. Say it wasted no time to get that in, to get that little dig in, being like, oh, I like your form better than shoes. He's like, no particular reason. I just think it's nice. I was like, I, what are you joking? Are you freaking kidding me? I love that Minato is oblivious through all of this. He's like, uh, what? <laughs> I love that he's just like, he's like, I don't know what's going on. These three men are after me, what? I just think it's nice. And then I was like, oh, well, that little blush she gives. He's like, oh, thank you. And then I love that. It's just like this little moment between Saya and Minato and Shoe's arrow slices through it behind him. Like, pay attention to me. He actually is a Taurus. <laughs> Taurus is like attention. And so Shoe loves the attention. Uh-huh. But not anyone's attention. He wants Minato's attention. And he says he can't reach greater heights. You need to take responsibility. And Minato's thinking responsibility. He's like, I don't know what to do with that. Hmm. After you've given it all, you've got what comes next. What comes after the results you get for giving 100%? Hmm. That's a really good question. So I feel like one of Minato's questions going into season two is going to be this idea of responsibility that Shu has designated to him. And he's like, okay, once you've given 100%, what is after that? After you're the best, what do you do? Like, what, what can you do, right? So how do, I, how do I take responsibility is kind of what he's asking. So that's going to be a question I feel like he's going to explore in season two, which will be fun. And so Kurosaki advances to the finals. And then the now is like, oh, look, Rin's over there. He's like looking for him. I love that he sees Rin. Nice. And then I love that he's like, why, is Misaki okay with you coming here? And he's like, oh, he'll be fine. He's great. And so they've already advanced to the finals. And of course he has his camera and his press release so he can take photos. And then I wanted to see the text message that he sent. And then they're like, you make it sound so easy that it'll pull off. I like that Rin's the outsider. Rin really doesn't have a clue how any of this is done. He's just like, you think they can pull it off? And the girls are like, it's not easy as it sounds. They're facing Kurosaki. Mm -hmm. He's like, well, you're supposed to say you bet that they will. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, the boys are doing good today. They've got a good attitude. So they'll probably be fine. They probably got this. Mm hmm. I love that now it's like, yeah, of course we do. Like, they all do seem really in really good spirits. And then, yeah. So he's like, I'm in the seats across the yard. And Nanao sent the feeling fine. So I wanted to make note, Nanao's uh, icon is the frog, of course. But then Rin's is like, it looks like a cell phone and a pen or like a tablet. I'm like, what are you doing, Rin? So, yeah. So the one twin, he's questioning his hand. Like, it, the grip isn't right. He doesn't, something feels off. Something doesn't feel right. And and Sinichi is like, what's up? Like what? He's like trying to trash talk and Manji's just not having it today. He's just like, he's so worried about himself. And he's like, I, he just gets aggravated. He's like, shut up, Sini. He's like, don't you ever get tired of trashing people? Mm. I love that. I love the, the expression Kiwani gives them. It's so much different than the other expressions they give other characters. Like the one twin's like, 
like he has very grumpy face. Like it's very interesting that they animate them so they animate them so differently than the others. But yeah, so I'm wondering if maybe in season two, one of Manji's things is going to be dealing with like something happening with his shooting. Maybe is it target panic? I don't know. And so the thing is, they try to make such a mountain out of a molehill. They're talking about them being so like being so hyper and and arrogant, but they're really not. They're really just excited to see that Masa's there, right? And they're just trying to, like, pep each other up. And, I mean, the most it is, like, Nanao giving Kaido a hard time about his Hakama. And he's like, I'm just kidding. And he's like, Nanao. And so the twins, the twins are, like, just talking about how annoying they are. And they're like, when you're arrogant, it's easiest to sabotage yourself. Which... It's funny, they look at Minato as they, they... It's almost like a misdirect. Kiwani has them focus on Minato in that moment of self-sabotage when it's said. Like, it's going to make us, the audience, believe that Minato's going to have a problem when really it's the twins. But I I am glad that when Sinichi mentions target panic, Maji, Maji gets upset because he might be developing it. And then I like that he, they, bump, they bump into Ryohei's bow, which honestly, it is... I don't know. It's not really anybody's fault. You could say it's the twins' fault for getting too close to them too soon. I almost wondered if the twins were, like, going to walk over and rile them up. And I was like, if they had hung back for, like, another five seconds, nothing would have happened. But this scene where Ryohei bumps into their bow brings up a pretty good point that I hadn't even thought of. And that was the idea of the bows getting messed up. Hadn't even dawned on me that that could be something that happened. I'm like, oh, if they hit the bows and something got knocked off or the tuning wasn't right, it could affect them. That hadn't even dawned on me. I was like, oh. So I find that really interesting. And poor Ryohei is like, oh, I'm so sorry. And they get mad at him and say, is like, hey, do we need somebody to go and inspect the bows? Like, Seiya, Seiya has the very, just like the president of Kurosaki, he has that same, like, calm, cool mentality of, hey, We'll go have the staff check it out if you all are worried about that. Do you want a member to look at it? And they're like, well, he didn't apologize. Ryo hated, he, he did say he was sorry, right? He said he didn't mean to. And that's when Sase is like, knock it off, you two. Like, leave him alone. Because, yeah, there was no reason. Here's the thing. None of Kurosaki was headed that way yet. So there was no reason for them to follow behind Ryohei unless they were going to go antagonize him. So it's kind of their own fault that it happened. But I'm glad that Sa I'm glad that Sase actually and the president actually get on to them this time. It's like they put up with so much all season from these twins and they finally are like, okay, no more. We've, we've put up with a lot. You two need to calm down. Like, we understand you want to win, but you have to calm down. And they're like, well, I'm calm. And the president's like, this will be the final tournament for Sase and I. And he's like, yeah, I want Kurosaki's chosen members to give a performance we can be proud of. Mm. So that's the thing. I, so I guess there isn't, like, if there is a national competition, it's not the same as this. So this was the finals. So they're like, this is our last tournament. Don't muck it up, boys. We want Nori Ren to be proud of us too. And I love these. Just like if I can, even if I can never tell her face to face, I love these two guys in the back have been delegated to just like carry all the things and be there as moral support. And the one guy that looks like Connie from Attack on Titan has to hold up the Nori Ren fan. I love that. I'm kind of rooting for Sase and Nanao to be a crack ship. I'm rooting for Sase and Nanao to become a thing. Season two manifest this if you're if you're gonna make kaido and now cousins manifest sase and now moments i need this in my life because i feel like this could be a thing i'm really gunning for it mm -hmm. i love it and then i love the president's like okay well you heard him he's a baka but let's do this and so then I just, God, God, that look, the look that Shu gives Seiya is like, it is a look of, I could murder you right now. <laughs> but instead, we're going to walk side by side to the archery tournament. Like, he just eyes Seiya. And you know what? I am proud of our boy Seiya. He's stuck up for himself. He's not going to be affected by Shu's words. I love that Shu just chooses to side, walk side by side with them. It's amazing. He's like, are you still chasing Monado? And he's like, no, I'm not chasing him anymore. And he's like, oh. He says, I'm doing this with him. Like, Saya, 
Good on him. I love that he says that he is side by side with Minato. And so I feel like that, that is something that Shu may have to deal with in the next season is that he, he cares for Minato an awful lot, wants to be side by side with him, but they're not on the same team anymore. So he can't be. So what do we do with that? I don't think he'd quit Kurosaki. I don't. I think he's still going to be on Kurosaki's team. He's kind of in the same boat. It's so funny. I You can compare Shu to Rin and say it a Minato um, or M Makoto in this sense from Free in that Rin was always on the uh, opposing team. So he could never technically swim with Haru, whereas Shu's never technically shooting with Minato, but they're going to compete against each other. I feel that same dynamic. The Rin Haru dynamic is with Shu and Minato and the Makoto and Haru dynamic is with Seiya and Haru, which those are my favorite, some of my favorite ships in free. So I'm all for these. And he's like, Oh, he's like with him. a, eh? And I feel like she realizes at that moment that his words are not going to cut Seiya anymore. And he's like, yes, I've stopped leading him and waiting for him. He's like, instead, I'm going to be side by side with him. And she was just like, oh, hmm. And I just love that they both walk on either side of Minato. And Minato's just like, what? <laughs> I love that Minato's like, was like, Are, was, there, was there a problem? Was there something? What, 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 what's going on? But yeah, Say is walking side by side with Minato. And she realizes that he is not going to deter Saya. So there's going to be that fun to deal with next next episode next season. Just that fun right there. No worries. I love that Manal is just like what the hell? What's going on? What's happening? And so then we have them all lining up ready to go and they're all set next to each other and Shu being I love that Shu looks over to Manado and, and says that he's glad. I'm thrilled to get to shoot against you again. And I like that Manal has a serious look. And he's like, yes, so am I. And the funny thing about it is, I don't think Manato is aware <laughs> that Shu really feels for Manato. I don't think Manato is aware of it. I think it just, whew, he's like, yeah, I'm glad to play against you too, buddy old pal. And Shu's like, I adore you. And he's like, I find you fancy too. Like he just doesn't get it, right? Completely goes over his head. He says, the thought of challenging you guys with my team makes me so happy I could cry. And I love that. I just love that everyone's expression when he says that. When he says that the thought of challenging you guys with my team makes me so happy. You have Nanao being like with a little blush because he's the closest to hearing it going, okay. You have Seiya with the knowing look like, Mm -hmm. All right. You have Ryohei who's just like a puppy dog. Like, like he looks like he's been head patted on the head. And then Kyle's just like, don't show that you are feeling anything from this. <laughs> it's so good. And then the other team just kind of tenses up a little bit. Right? But Minato, is, his eyes are so sparkly. And she was just like, I look forward to it. Ah! God! He's like, I, could, I couldn't love you more. And so then they all go to the entrance hall to go. Mm hmm So they go here saying that um, the reason he got into the accident wasn't going to see a Sone. And he's like, no, he's not that kind of guy. He wouldn't blame him. And then with her, with her hat, I was like, I love it. Saonji, Saonji Sensei. That she has a little hat on. I love she's like, I'm in God. It's like, Granny, your kimono gives you away. Nakazaki-kun, how unexpected. He's like, that's my line. Or she says, San. He's like, what are you doing in a children's tournament? She's like, my students are here. And she doesn't dignify him with a response. She's just like, you'll see. And I love that Nanao's fan club is there as well. It's great. And Tommy Sensei and the coaches are there. But they go through the lineup and everything. And they all shoot. And it's just so serene and quiet. I love it. And Minato making every single one. Our boy. Going from target panic to making every single shot in the final. Mm. Feels so good. It feels so good. 
But yeah, I like that. I like that Ren's our outsider being like, I, was that good? Everybody like they hit 10 shots in a row, right? And it's going to come down to the draw, right? And I was saying that the rain, it's like the rain has stopped and I can see clearly, not just myself, but I know everyone here. And he talks about Kaido. And so he says, so he talks about each of them saying that Kaido is surprisingly sensitive. Yeah. Our big Sundere, our surprisingly sensitive Kaido. They wears his heart on his sleeve. He can't move to the next motion until everything feels just right. Yeah, and I love that shot where it turns, the bow turns, and you can see Kurosaki's members in front of him, but the bow turns for him. Oh, that was so good. Mm -hmm. And then Ryohei's best when he pours his heart into it. So then you have Ryohei, who pours, pours his heart in it. That's the thing. Ryohei pours his heart into it. And we see him doing his thing. And he said, Seiya takes every gesture with ease. Which, God, we've, we've gone through Seiya. We'll talk about this in a minute. But has ease. And what else does he say? Every gesture with perfect ease. Like a vertical line drawn with a brush. No motion wasted. I love it. No motion wasted. And then with Nanao, he's easygoing. No tension. All right. I love the hair just flowing through Seiya's. Like, it's so great in his bangs. And then he's like, me. And then he gets supple and easygoing. And then when it gets to him, he's like, what can I do, right? And he sees the ripple. And he's the anchor, right? Yes. I'm, I'm, it's interesting that Minato doesn't talk about himself in this. He doesn't talk about it. Um, but we can assume that Minato, he's kind of the anchor, right? He's the Ochi at the end that keeps them all anchored and is that inspiring force to keep moving them forward. Like when he hits it, it's great. It's just so good. Oh, God. And that, man, that one shot that Shu says, like, Shu is getting riled up. Like, that one shot, the arrow is, like, bending and burrowing and, like, hits the dirt. Shu gets riled up by Minato. Dude. Dude. Like, everybody. I love the girls were like, well, well, that was tense. But Minato, I love that where he hits it. And I... Oh, and I like the grandma's like, hmm, your crush is getting the better of you, Shu. Shu is so worked up. Like, from the, uh, from the audience perspective, it barely seems like it, but there, it is intense, y'all. Who would imagine that shooting this, shooting a bow would be this, had this much tension, right? And then it's all down to Minato and Shu. It's all down to them. And they're like, it's coming down to the two Ochi. And they all, at this point, it's down to their last hits. And they all, I like that when they get done, they all sit down one by one. And it comes down to them. Kurosaki has the unstoppable Fujiwara shoe. And Naramiya still gets target panic. And the grandmother, she's like, my dears, it's not going to go that way. Because look, Minato is looking at the target. Shoe is not. She was thinking of Minato instead. And he's like, I'm not going to waver. If I miss, the others will hit. And of course, right as he says that, Masa shows up. Of course. Of course, that's how it goes. That's why doing this with them means something. I have a reason to be here. Yeah, and so that's, that's interesting is that he has his team needs him and he has a reason to be there right because before he was struggling with target panic and thinking like why am i here what's the point and now he's like no i have a reason to be here right and so shu that may be something that shu deals with in the next season is that why is shu there why is he on his team what can he do for his teammates i mean obviously he's this unstoppable force but 
what do we do with that? Whereas Minato, he's got this, I think that Shu and the twins are going to deal without the president and Sase. How is the team dynamic going to change? Are we going to, is season two going to go into their second year? Are we going to stay in the first year? How is that going to work? Is the team dynamic going to have to shake it up? We'll see. That's going to be interesting, right? That's going to be interesting to see, like, how will the team dynamics change for Kurosaki? Because we know that, we know Kazumai, they've got, like, a solid foundation. They've got their five members there and the girls, they're good. But Kurosaki's going to go through some, through some changes. So how is Shu going to deal with that? That's going to be interesting to see. And then he just lets it go. And I love that everybody's watching him. And trying not to be... I love that Saya looks the most sure out of all of them. Right? And then we don't get to see Masa's expression. But he's watching. He says, Minato, do you understand? Everyone here is watching you shoot. I love it! And he says, ah, what a beautiful draw. Mm-hmm. As the sunlight's shining. And he lets it go. Yep. And then Shu, and Shu lets go too. Oh. Ah. And I love just how like silent it is. And everybody looks in the two targets that are left. Shu's missed. And that's it. And they all say yes at the same time. And then I was like, oh crap, I did it. Oh, but he's like, and then he sees Masa clapping for him. Like, uh-huh. I see why Masa told me to go to the back. Go back that day. Mm -hmm. Archery should be done with a team. Yeah. Ah! Oh. Man, that animation, like when Shu lets go the arrow. Oh, and he realizes he's going to miss it. It's like he knew in that moment he was going to miss. And oh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then I love that there, he was telling me that I needed this place. Yep. Mm-hmm. And they win by one. So, I, I feel like with season two, Shu, we're going to have to deal with, like, the team dynamics. Especially thinking about what's going to happen once the president and Sase are gone. So, dealing with that, that's going to be their thing. And my dogs are going crazy. As they do. And then with Minato, Minato, Minato has somewhat solved his conflict. He is fine. Minato's done his thing. He's all good. Um, it's really going to come down to... Yeah, we're all good. It's really going to come down to um, what the other teammates do. Because I feel like Minato solved his conflict, right? So I feel like like Minato's safe. He's fine. Like we've we've spent this whole season where he has figured out his purpose. He knows what to do now for Kyoto. Minato's oddly enough, our protagonist is in like the best place, right? Whereas Shu may have some things in season two to deal with. And I could easily see, like, I feel like with Minato and Seiya, we've spent most of the season with these two characters solving out their issues. Now I feel like season two is gonna be like Kurosaki and Shu dealing with things. Maybe Nanao and Kaido and Ryohei can have things that they have to deal with. I could see like stuff happening with them. There's a lot of different things that could happen. But I feel like of all the characters, Seiya and Minato are in like the best place. And Shu may be the one that has to have some some heart to heart. Our prince, right? So I'm really excited about that. I'm ready to see that all come together. But man, our boys, I love that. I love that they finally just, they, they don't get too crazy, but they do celebrate. And I love that Kaido gets kind of bashful and he's like, I'm not bashful. And Ryohei's like, Minato, that last shot, you were incredible. And I love that Nanao like interviews Kaido like he's the, like he's Tommy Sensei. And he's like, what went through your mind at that moment, Sensei? And I love that Kaido's like, he, he hesitates for a moment. He hesitates before answering. Like he's like, do I feel like Nanao brings out Kaido's sense of humor and like kind of childish personality like Kaido tries to hide it but now brings it out and it's really really cute I love this moment and he he's debating on whether he does it or not but then he realizes they're all a team and so he goes I thought that's my boy <laughs> it's so freaking cute I love it and they all think it's funny he's like what was that we couldn't hear you you should bellow it out like you usually do He's like, my hands are shaking. And then, uh, you know, his hands are shaking and Saya's like, I will be your 
anchor. <laughs> and it's like, so he puts his hand on him. I'm like, ah, uh, I'm like, show what, how you show, how you get me to ship three different, three different pairs with Monado. Monado's got a harem and it just, oddly enough, Kaido, I don't ship Kaido with Monado, not really, but I love it. They all get together, do the fist bump. It's super cute. And then the funny thing is, we cut back to Tommy Sensei and Masa, and Tommy Sensei acknowledges that he's like, I do have a regret. He's like, back when I made, you know, Minato shoot that very first day of the club meeting, he's like, I shouldn't have done that. He didn't need that reminder of his target panic. He's like, that's something I should not have done. And he's like, and I regret that. So he's like, even, the, even an old man like me that's been coaching forever still learns some things and realizes, you know, how he can tweak things for the future. He still has a long path to guide and teach others. Ah, And then of course we cut to the twin, the twins who are back there, the one still on the range, like obviously sad and crying. And then Sase coming over and being like, or no, it's not Sase. It's the two guys that were supports. He's like, hey, it's fine, it happens. I like that. I like the two guys that were supporting the team, that they're the ones that helped get the twin. They're like, where's all that attitude? Come on, buck up. And he's like, I'm not crying. And like, there it is. And then uh, Shu is interesting because Shu is the one that is most distant from the team in this moment. I wonder if Shu, Shu doesn't ever cry in any of this. He doesn't cry because, you know, technically he was the shot that lost the game. Doesn't seem to affect him. Like he looks over to Minato and he smiles and says something. And it's just like, I love you. I, I know that's not it. But he looked over and mouthed something to him. And I'm like, of course they did this. Of course he mouthed something. I'm like, what did he say? Maybe we'll find out in the OVA. Or we'll find out in season two. I was like, oh, this show would do like a little lips, a lip miming thing where we don't get to see what he says. How dare it? How dare it? But honestly enough, I, I'm actually surprised that Shu's not, I guess it fits his character. He's not torn up about it. He's fine with it. I guess that makes sense. But Minato's like, Shu, I shot my way. He's like, and though it's not the way that you shoot. Mm. So I feel like I'm very proud of Shu that he was totally chill and was okay with how the match ended up going. And he seemed like he's in a decent place at least. It's still gonna be interesting to see what ends up happening in the future, but I'm glad that he was fine at the end. And Minato's like, you do your thing and I'll do mine. Ah! But then we go back to the end with Masa and, and Minato. And I love that he has little, he has little Ravenclaw-esque uh, towel on his shoulder for who. And he's talking about the Nosha ceremony. He's like, the goals were so loud. It was so windy at Asone's place. My grandfather said the same thing. He'd shot at Asone's dojo a few times. I, Kiyawani just blesses us with Masa and his half-naked torso. So yeah, Masa. That he got, he got the answers, I guess, that he was looking for. He's like, the notion went smoothly, but it's strange. I just love how serene this is. I felt my grandfather's presence more strongly compared to here, over there. Like he was watching me the entire time. And then I was like, well, do you think he was worried about you? Like, I like this, like, spirituality that comes out. It's like, do you think he was worried? And I like that Masa's like, no, Baka. He's like, I, I, lo I love that moment between the two of them. Like, no, I still hit the target. Hmm. I, t I was told that I looked like my grandfather in the way that I shot, even though I hated and resented him as a teacher. Let him shoot here someday. Hmm. He's going to become a good archer. It is him from the first episode. Yeah. So Masa realizes that his grandfather did have faith in him. And he did love him, despite despite their animosity towards each other. At the end, he did love him. And it cuts back to him. He's like, he was just flattering himself. Oh, I love that. What good does it do to tell me that now? 
And I, I do love that Minato kind of like, he kind of wilts there a little bit. Like, like what good is it to know how he felt about him now that I can't talk to him? Like, you get the idea that Masa, Masa has regrets about his grandfather that he can't talk to him now. He's like, what good does it do now that I can't talk to him? What's the point? And Minato, he's like trying to think of what to say. He's like, do you love archery, Masa-san? And then he smiles and he's like, yes. It took me a few detours, detours to get here, but I do love it. He's like, I want to believe that you couldn't have done it any other way. And Minato's like, that everything in the world, even my own target panic, was happening for a reason. And then we know from the beginning that he has... That they, they have been intertwined from the start. So I get it. I get why y'all ship them if you do. If you ship Masa and Minato, I get it. This last scene, I was like, oh, I see. Hmm. Although, still, the, the Masa and Minato age difference is a little bit... A little bit much for me right now. Now, if we showed them as adults, full-blown adults, then I, I hear y'all. I could see it. Mm -hmm. I get it. He's like, that was very poetic. But I don't like, they just tease each other. It's really cute. He's like, well, it's true. And he's like, it happens for a reason, eh? Hmm. And he gets the arrow from him. Yeah, I totally see it. I see the ship. I see it. He's like, in that case, I'm taking back the last of my 10,000 shots. And then he shoots it. And then, and then, yeah, you see the hand grip and you see that they've been there the whole time next to each other in that moment. I just, oh my God, they were there the whole time. Because there's what age difference? He said he's what, 23? He's 23 and Minato's what? 14 or 15, so there's probably like nine years difference. Nine year difference between them. So if he was like eight there, then Minato would have been 17. So yeah, that checks out. Man. Again, if they were all if they were both adults, like if Minato was 20 and and Masa was 29, I could see it maybe a little bit more. But it's hard to ship them when there's that big of an age difference. But the fact, though, whether, regardless of whether you ship them or not, the fact that they've both been in each other's lives since the beginning and they were both affected by that one shot from an arrow. Oh, what a perfect bookend. What a perfect bookend to this whole season. I'm so excited to watch this again. But we have the OVA. So I do have the Blu-ray set. Uh, next week I'm going to bust that out and go over the books and stuff with you now that we've made it through the season. We're going to watch the OVA. We're going to go through the booklets, do all that. That would be a lot of fun. I'm excited to read the bios and show you all the pictures and stuff. I haven't even looked at it yet. I was like, I didn't want to be spoiled, so I've kept it in my little box with the plastic wrap on. Um, but I'm going to whip that out next week and we'll get to look at it together. So I'm pretty excited. But man... What a feel-good, great ending of the season. We're still setting stuff up for next season that could go down. I'm hoping next season, now that we know the fundamentals and the sport of Kudo, we can focus more on the characters even more in depth in the next season. But we still got the OVA to get through, and I'm pretty excited about it. So I hope you all have a wonderful week and that you enjoyed this discussion and reaction. I'm curious to hear your comments down below. But in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe, take care, and yeah, I'll be back next week with the OVA for Sarune.